Well, good morning, church. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, it's hard to believe that it's a brand new year, and with it comes the feeling of potential and opportunity. New can be very exciting, but it can also bring with it a sense of anxiety, because sometimes new means change, and at times, the fear of the unknown gets us a little bit down and makes us a little bit nervous. But as this new year begins, what if we decide that instead of fearing the unknown, that we will choose to have hope in the known? So what do we uh, know about new? Well, what I do know to be true is that I can securely put my hope in the things of God. And I know this, God is the author of new. Scripture says this in James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. So new is one of God's promises to us. In 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, uh, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken to us, by, by us to the glory of God. And so as believers, our hope ultimately rests in the promise that Jesus will come one day and make all things new. Yes? But what about the here and now? <laughs> what can we know for sure today and tomorrow and every day of this new year? Well, we find those answers in Scripture. And Scripture is full of stories that show us how God makes things new for his glory and for the good of his people. So uh, let's take a look at just a few of those things and the hope that they bring. And the first thing that we know that we can put our hope in this year is that God has the ability to restore he restores us to a right relationship with him through the gift of forgiveness and justification. God is able to restore even our human relationships. He's able to restore our peace when the circumstances of life shake us. God can even restore days and years that have been lost to the effects of sin. And we see that promise in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, that God can restore the years that the locusts have eaten. And that has to be uh, the greatest evidence of the extravagant nature of God's mercy, right? That not only can he renew a life and redeem its future, but that he can also redeem its past. And all throughout scripture, we see God's power of restoration. Like when Jacob was finally reunited with his lost son, Joseph, uh, he'd been filled with grief for years, thinking that his son had died. But in his last days, God reconciled him to his son, Joseph, who had been sold into slavery when he was just a young man. And through God's mercy, Jacob was able to look back on his life and see that God had been at work all along. And now he'd restored this relationship and he'd restored Jacob's joy. In the story of Ruth, uh, we see God take a family whose name faced extinction and not only restore them uh, to them a secure future, but he knit them into the grand story of redemption by placing them in Jesus' family line. In the New Testament, uh, we see Jesus live a, a, a ministry of restoration. He restores sight to the blind. Uh, he restores the ability to walk to the crippled, the hearing to the deaf, and new clean skin to the diseased. And in all of these accounts, Jesus didn't just heal a condition. He restored life, security, and hope to broken people. So what has God restored to you? Has he restored time? Has he restored relationships? And what are you hoping to see Jesus restore to you in this new year? Well, the second thing that we know we can put our hope in this year is that God renames. You see, names, they carried a lot of significance in Scripture. And throughout the Bible, people are introduced to us by name and then by the meaning of their name. And so Eve was the mother of all living. Isaac was laughter. And Samuel was asked of God. And what's even more significant is the renaming of people in Scripture. Right? When God gave someone a new name, it was always a sign of renewed purpose and redeemed life. 
God changed Abram's name to Abraham to signify his promise to make him the father of many nations. He changed the names of Hosea's children from no mercy and not my people to my loved one and my people to symbolize his love for Israel and his plan to redeem her from idolatry. Simon became Peter and Saul became Paul when they became Jesus' disciples. They received new identities in Christ as they allowed God to redirect their lives and bring renewed purpose. And so while we might not actually receive new names when we become Christ followers, we certainly receive new identities. See, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. God has brought and continues to bring newness to our lives through Jesus. God's miracles, they're new every morning, and he alone makes us worthy to be called new in Christ. Yes? Yes? And so if you are in Christ, you've been given a new name, a new identity. Uh, The question is this, are you living according to your new name with renewed purpose and with redemption? Maybe the second question is this, how can you do that even more in this new year? Finally, I wanted to offer just this one last thing that we know we can put our hope in this year. It is that God resurrects. God makes dead things alive again, literally, right? Stuff had trouble staying dead when Jesus came on the scene. He has the power over death in every sense, and he demonstrated that to us when he raised Jesus from the grave. Scripture says this, as believers, we have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living in us, and it's what gives life to our dead souls, And so as we dwell on life this time of year, it's easy for us to look back and get discouraged, thinking about how things are not as we wish they were. As we reflect, we recognize those times that uh, maybe we've failed, maybe we've given in to temptation, times that we've allowed small things to become big things and to set us on a road of conflict and frustration. Uh, We see maybe missed opportunities and regrets, and all these things, uh, they kind of make this idea of fighting this battle of life for another year seem overwhelming. But this truth that we have the same power that raised Jesus from the grave dwelling in us can give us great hope. And we can overcome when we just lay down our weak, flawed existence every day at his feet and trust that God will resurrect it with new life and new grace, yes? So do you trust in God's power to resurrect? And are you living in the truth that God can bring new life to your soul every day? Or are you living as someone defeated by sin and shame and pain and life in general? These are good questions for us to uh, think about this time of year. And as we begin this brand new year, would you with me commit to hope in God's power to make all things new. See, he restores lost time. He bestows new identities. He creates new life. He gives new mercies every morning. He promises good plans for his people, plans that include a hope and a future. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So rather than seeing the start of another year as a daunting task to be met, (laughs) or an unknown to be feared. Let's just trust in what we already know about our God. That there will be blessings, that there will be new trials, that there will be new failures, that there will be new victories, and that this year his goodness will be woven in and through all of it. And that all the promises of God, they are yes and amen. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this day, for the opportunity uh, that you bring us in the renewal of a new year, the excitement that comes with it. But God, uh, honestly, would have, to, uh, be, uh, would have to be honest and say sometimes anxiety comes with a new year too. 
especially as we look over these last few years and the, uh, the way that we've been disappointed by the circumstances of our world. But God, today uh, we continue to put our trust and our hope in you and you alone. We commit to trust in the things we know, to hope in the things we know about you. To take all of life's circumstances, to bring them to you, to see your goodness and your grace in all of it. God, we pray that you would help us to be people of hope, that you would help us to keep our eyes on you, that you would help us to live lives that give you glory in this new year. We thank you. And we praise you for all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I don't know what... Hold on. I know you're so excited. I love that. Uh, I don't know what the, me- the Lord is speaking to you today in this message, but your invitation is to identify what next steps he might be calling you to take. Maybe it's a conversation. Maybe it's information. Uh, maybe it's uh, a decision. It's something he's been prompting, putting on your heart for a while. And today, this first day of a brand new year, is the day that you say yes and take those next steps in your faith journey. We invite you to connect with us if we can be of an encouragement to you in any way. If we can stand with you, walk with you, pray with you, do life with you, we'd be honored to do that. And so now, um, as we continue in worship, we're going to enter into a time of preparation for communion. So.